This winter has brought it all so far. The driest January and February on record, the snowiest December on record in the Sierra, and the wettest October storm on record. It's something climate scientists call weather whiplash, and it's likely to get more extreme in a warmer climate. Meteorologist Darren Peck is here with more. Land by breaking as many records this winter as we have, like you just mentioned, and breaking them on opposite ends of the extreme, so close to one another. It's kind of like the Bay Area is being given a crash course in what climate scientists are trying to tell us when they say weather whiplash is going to be getting more extreme. February was weird, like record breaking weird. More near record temperatures in the forecast this weekend. Let's back up a second. We were also breaking records in October and December for the exact opposite reason. We're talking about wind and fog and inches of rain. We've just gotten a crash course in what climate scientists mean by weather whiplash. This year, from late 2021 into the early part of 2022, is a great example of exactly this kind of precipitation whiplash. Dr. Daniel Swain and his colleagues and coined the phrase weather whiplash in a 2018 paper showing how much more extreme the whiplash could become in a warmer climate. Within the winter season, we expect there to be more variability, wild swings between individual wet months and individual dry months during winter, during the water year. Let's look at this year's two extremes. We didn't just break temperature records in mid-February. The dome of high pressure in the atmosphere at that time was also the strongest ever recorded off our coast in mid-February. But perhaps more important, the entire two months of January and February were dominated by a near constant block of high pressure off the coast. This is how you deepen droughts. December, however? So we've got probably close to six, seven, maybe even eight feet of snow out here. And that was totally different. The term weather whiplash has definitely uh, been used uh, adequately to describe what we're seeing up here this year. Andrew Schwartz runs the Central Sierra Snow Lab. Our December was the snowiest December that we'd ever had. We had 214 inches of snow here at the lab. And let's not forget October. It was, after all, just 700% of average rainfall for the month. This turns out to be the strongest atmospheric river in 40 years that occurred in October. It's actually the atmospheric rivers that are gonna bring the biggest impacts from either side of the whiplash. And so what we're really going to have to come to terms with is not a future without water, but a future with water coming at inconvenient times and in inconvenient amounts. Since we've gotten so much better at forecasting atmospheric rivers, we can now be smarter about the way we manage our water. And if you wanted to see an example of how we move forward into a world with increasing weather whiplash, come here to Sonoma County. They used to have to release water from these huge reservoirs, regardless of what the forecast was for flood control priorities. But using highly detailed forecasts of atmospheric rivers, they are now able to hold on to a lot more of this water in a safer way so we can keep it for the dry times. We need to know when those atmospheric rivers are coming in, whether they're gonna land above our reservoir or below. And once we do that, we can replicate the science behind that to other reservoirs across the West. We also still have some say in how extreme the whiplash becomes. Daniel's research assumes carbon emissions stay at their current path. The good news is, uh, hopefully, that we won't actually do that and that real world carbon emissions will come in uh, under the, the levels uh, foreseen in a high warming scenario. That part of the weather whiplash story that's still to be written. So a lot of interesting information there. But Darren, hasn't California always been known as a place that has those big swings from year to year, even month to month? Yes, kind of notorious for that. And not every other part of the country does that. We, in fact, I've got a real pretty visualization to show you just how unique California's climate is in terms of going through big swings. We use the term average here for rainfall. We very rarely ever have an average year. And if you look at the map of the United States, the darker you are shaded in the colors on here, the bigger your swings on average every year from what average would be on precipitation. Most of the country falls in the yellow and the pink, which means they range by like 10% off that mark. If you look at California, I mean, Southern California, every year ranges anywhere from 60 to 70% off 
of the average. That means we're always swinging back from one extreme to the other. And here in Northern California, our swing is about 30 to 40 percent off of average. The question is, how much more extreme do we want those swings to get? That's what the climate science is telling us. We're going to take what California has all, always done historically, and we're going to start making it more extreme. The whiplash is going to start becoming more exaggerated like we're seeing this year. And to get back to Daniel's last point on this, we do still have some say. His research looked at kind of the worst case scenario in terms of carbon emissions following that line all the way up to perhaps five degrees of warming. And this is the latest projection put out just about two weeks ago by the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, showing you how much we've already warmed the atmosphere up to about one degree Celsius. Those are all our options right there. We don't have to go to the extreme. There is still time to make a course correction on this, and that will have an impact on how wild the swings get and, Len, more importantly, on how manageable or unmanageable the extreme swings become in the whiplash. Yeah, a lot to think about. And in your story, you also mentioned atmospheric rivers becoming the more impactful side of that whiplash. What does that look like in a warmer climate? Yeah, let's do that. In fact, the study broke down uh, kind of four different extreme scenarios of what to expect for California. I'm going to get to the atmospheric rivers as the fourth one. The one over here, you see the state of the California? This is showing you how much change would be expected under a high warming scenario by the time we get to 2100. And we're going to look at four different kind of sides of the coin. Extreme dry years, like 2016, 1977, those were big, deep drought years. How much more common would we go through the extreme dry years? 1.8 tells you almost twice as common. But on the flip side of that coin, the really wet years, the extreme wet years, like, you know, that, that winter then picked up again with a very rainy winter just after we had that last significant dry year. And it was a lot of rain. And that number goes up by about two and a half times. In other words, we're going to see the really big rainfall years that go way above average happen two and a half more times as common than what we're seeing now. And the important takeaway from this is average is not going to change. We'll be coming away with the same average amount of rainfall when you average these out over the years. It's just we're going to have to prepare ourselves for much more dryness and much bigger wetness, sometimes in unmanageable ways. The one over here, 1.25 for Northern California. This one is telling you how much more common we can expect that shift to happen from year to year. In other words, going from an extreme dry year to an extreme wet year, really fast like that, back to back, that's going to become about 25% more common in Northern California. And the last one, Len, answers your question on there. The really big atmospheric rivers, the ones that are really capable of doing some of the most significant damage, like the kind of historic flooding that we haven't seen in California since, since going back to the 1860s. The flood of 1862, I know a lot of people don't ever really think about it or hear about it much, but it was um, extraordinarily large and devastating for much of the state. The Central Valley basically became a lake. Up until now, we would expect to get a significant flooding year like that once every 200 years. But if we go all the way to that high side on the warming, the research is showing us that's going to go up by five times. In other words, we'll see that happen five times more often than we have in the historical record. And that would really have a huge impact. And that would, all of the big floods in California come from atmospheric rivers. They're the most important part of our rainfall year. They make or break every year, whether we come in above or below average. So how those change are likely going to have the biggest impact in all of this. You put it best. We've been on a crash course for sure. Thank you for breaking all of that down for us, Dan. Sure.